And so the goal of the tutorial here today is how to give more guidance, how to give more control to you so that the result would be closer to what you actually want. And um, happily, in the past, I would say no more than a month, there is a, there is a, a line of new models that give you a bit more of control and I want to sort of expose you to, to, to that workflow. So I'm just starting here by the result of what you're gonna get by the end of this. Um, so on the left side here, you are seeing a very, very, very crude and basic representation of the built environment. Literally five boxes, the same tree multiplied three times, and that's it. And a sun, right, for the shadows. Um, on the middle here, you're seeing a depth image. So imagine this very, very, very basic scene. We have a camera, right? We have our eyesight in the model. If you use Rhino, if you use any other 3D tool, there is always a viewport, the place from which we observe the scene. Now, we can measure the distance from our eye to any point on that model. We as humans can inter uh, interpret this part as very far and this part as much closer. Again, a computer wouldn't know how to do it by itself. And so what we give the computer is this map in which each value represents the distance between the camera and the object. The closer we are, the brighter we are, the farther we are, the darker we are, but it could be any, any color scheme. It doesn't have to be black and white. It could be red to yellow, whatever. It's just a matter of, of a value zero to one or value zero to infinity. So why do, I, why do I show you that? I show you that because we're gonna feed the model with these two images. And by the end of it, it will create this image for us. As you can see, there is a lot of resemblance between the volumes I have here and the volumes I see here on the end. And in a sense, that's a very different result from what we've seen here. Here we have zero control over the creation. Here we have a massive control over the creation, right? We're very, very close to, to rendering. Now, why is it dark and why is it, uh, you know, looks like an American city? That's because I also injected another piece of information, which is this piece of text here. The street view of Kendall Square in Cambridge, Massachusetts, nighttime with a full moon. Okay, so that's what I gave to the model. Let's leave the, um, the notebook for now. We're gonna go back to that in a second, but I wanna take you to Rhino. This is literally the simplest scene you can imagine in Rhino. It's literally, um, I don't know how many, 10 boxes with three weirdly shaped uh, circles or, or, or volumes that represent trees, one sun or you know one light to represent sun, and that's it, right? So let's imagine those white buildings as the context and the blue buildings as your intervention. Right, and, I, and I intentionally take a very, very, very basic um, uh, scene over here. Now, I also shared with you this grasshopper, very short grasshopper component that I wrote, which the only thing it's doing is to create those two images I showed you before, the background image and the depth image. So um, what you're doing here is you're specifying the path. The path is basically a location on your computer in which you want to save those two images. You have a button here to create those image, to create the images whenever you're ready. And there is an output which tells you which viewport you're currently looking at. So you can see I'm looking at the camera, right? So it tells me that I'm looking at the camera. Now, the only thing you need to do now is to really find an angle that you know, pleases you, that you like. It could be a top view, it could be a bottom view, a street view, whatever it is that you like. And as soon as you're ready, you just leave the, the scene, go back to Grasshopper and click once that button. There are two images here. And so once again, we, we open up the file, we created five boxes, we created a few, a few spheres and circles. Um, we gave them simple baseline materials. We then went to Grasshopper, um, we selected the location and we uh, saved those two images. And as I showed you before, those two images should now be uh, on my desktop. So they're here. And um, we also can see the other image, which is this, right? These are the baseline inputs for our uh, model. I'm going back to the notebook right now. Um, so this is this is our notebook. Uh, we went through that first part again. We showed we, we saw the example of what it is that we're going to feed the model with and what will be the result. Um, and now we will basically run that notebook. Now this this might take uh, let's see if it's already satisfied. Okay, this might take some time. Um, I ran it before, so it ran a bit faster for me, but the first step, the setup and imports, which you don't really need to expand and read, you can just play, press play, is basically where we import all the uh, machine learning models um, and deep learning models into our environment and allow the computer to start working with them. But again, if it's complicated and daunting, just tap here, close that bar and press play, that will run it for itself. 
the next step is actually important to, to expand. So I'm, I'm going to expand it here. Um, here, we basically want to load those two images. Remember, we created those two images. I'm going to run the first one to select uh, the base image. OK, and it's going to open up this pretty familiar um, interface for choosing a file. I can then go here and select the actual image. OK, it's on my desktop. It's going to take a second, but then it's going to load this image. By the way, if you want to see where it is, it's actually being loaded into a temporary hard drive that you have access to here. And now we are loading the depth image. That's the other image that we created. Once again, we're going to load the depth image. OK, those two images are now loaded. And now we go to the third part. This is really the fun part. This is really where we start and interact with the model and actually run the model itself. So here we can think about the prompt. Remember that text prompt that I showed you here on the top, where I said, give me a street view of Kendall Square in Cambridge, Massachusetts at nighttime. This is really where you can start and play with that and say, you know, I want Tel Aviv colorful and in the sunset. Now, one thing to remember, the text should somewhat represent what it is that you aim to get at the end. Meaning if I would write, you know, an image of a volleyball in, uh, in Sahara, there will be some weird result coming out of that, right? We want to, help to, be, to, to have the text somewhat corresponding to the final result we aim to, to get in, in our uh, image. But I'm going to just try this one. I don't know how it's going to work. Maybe, it's work. maybe it will work, maybe not. I don't know. Um, and that's it. And now we are ready to actually run it. So once again, you don't have to expand the code. If you really want to go deeper, you can see how uh, the code is being fed, how the, the input that we created is being fed into the uh, uh, deep learning code. And in a matter of, I would say, 12 to 15 seconds, um, you should you should get something. But I just want to jump here quickly to, to the result um, and potentially now print the three all together. So this is this is just a simple piece of code that gives you all the three images at once. So this was our input. This was our depth. This was our result. The last thing I want to do before we, we leave is to um, go through two things we are not going to do now for a couple of reasons. But the first one is called upscaling. Upscaling means that we take this small image. By the way, this image is, is pretty pretty sharp by itself. We don't need to do a lot in order to start and use it. But in many cases, you get images which are nice when they're small, but they're very low resolution. And they're hard to use if you need to print them on your boards or you know do anything more substantial with them. So this is a different model called an upscale model, which practically takes um, the input we, we gave, the, the image we just created, and it's scaling it up. But it, this is not just uh, you know Photoshop scaling. It's, a, it's an intelligent scaling where small things become larger things in the image, and the details are not lost. Uh, the other thing here is this is a, a starting point to make that thing more of a pipeline directly from uh, Rhino. So you wouldn't have to go through the process of saving those files on your computer and then injecting them into, into the pipeline. Uh, so if any of you want to take on, on an automatic rendering process that really takes it from Rhino to, uh, to the render without the need to do anything, this is the starting point. It's basically listening to that folder that, uh, in which you save the photos, and then it will run by itself the machine learning model and will create the images and save them back into that 